G'day and welcome to this video about analyzing an AC circuit when you don't have any access to a, a, an oscilloscope. If you're analyzing a DC circuit, the tool of choice is a multimeter and you can use it to analyze or probe various voltages or currents within a circuit and it actually does the job quite well. Difficulty arises when you have something that's a little bit more complex like this LED flasher where there's change going on. And if we try to use a multimeter to do our analysis, we can't really see what's going on. Now the tool of choice in this scenario would be an oscilloscope and if you have access to that then that's definitely the way to go. The difficulty there being is that oscilloscopes generally cost hundreds of dollars and they can go up to thousands and although there are cheaper ones um, they do have some limited bandwidth issues as well. If you're not too fussy and don't want to be analyzing something particularly high frequency you may be able to get by with something as simple as an Arduino. The Arduino website has an example of how to read an analog voltage. I'll include the link in the video description. Using the code provided unchanged, I've hooked it up to an LED flasher circuit that is based around a 555 timer. We can use the Arduino serial monitor function to view the values of the voltage. If we want to see what the waveform looks like, we can actually use the Arduino's serial plotter function. What if we wanted to take a snapshot of the waveform for further analysis, for example to determine its frequency? One way we could tackle this is to capture the raw data from the Arduino serial monitor and analyse it using Microsoft Excel. To do this, it is necessary to capture both voltage and time information and print both to the serial monitor so that the data then may be cut and pasted into Microsoft Excel for analysis. I've modified the code to include time information and voltage in the output. The colon character has been used to separate the various entries in the output string for each sample. I've also used an if statement to limit the output to a thousand samples in total. Since it would take a long time to write out a thousand entries at 9600 board, I've also increased the board rate. The output in the serial monitor looks like this. Each line in the serial monitor represents one sample period. All of the times are measured relative to the start time of the Arduino in microseconds. The first number we see on each line is the time that we began the sampling process, and the last number on each line is the time when the sample was completed and the result outputted to the serial monitor. The middle number is the voltage as measured by the analog to digital converter of the Arduino. I've used colon characters to separate the different parts and this will become useful when we are extracting the various pieces of information in Microsoft Excel. I've created an Excel spreadsheet with a few column and headers in it. I'm going to paste in one of the rows from the serial monitor. First thing that we want to do is extract the various parts of information from that string and we do that by identifying where the colons are and then use them to separate the information out. So to find the colons I'm going to use the Excel find function and it's going to search within the text and the starting point is the first character for the search and we can see the first colon is at column 6. Now for the next one, instead of starting at uh, column one, uh, character one, I'm going to start at character identified here plus one. And now that we have this, we can copy the, the results out and we know where all the columns are. Now to find the start time, I'm going to use the mid function and I, that is still going to be searching within the same text string. The starting point is going to be where colon 1 is, plus 1 character, and the number of characters is going to be basically this. And now we have the 52 from there. We can copy this function across and again, and we need to just tweak this now because we don't want to use colon 3. We want to actually use... Um, 
this so we can just make this a large number of characters because we don't care we just want everything on the end of the string and instead of using D we're going to use E and now we've captured all of the key pieces of information you notice here that the the numbers are aligning to the left and this is because Excel is treating them as text so I'm just going to quickly use the number value function to ensure that it thinks that they're a number The next thing I'm going to do is just format this as a table and we don't really need to see where the columns are anymore. So the next thing we can do is paste in the data from the serial monitor because we've already formatted this table the formulas come down which is nice and then what we're going to do is insert a chart that's a XY scatter plot of voltage versus time. It'd also be nice if our numbers were formatted. This is using control space to select. We can use the number format custom and we don't really want to have decimal places but it would be nice if we had um, the units displayed as well. So we're going to put microseconds and on the voltage, we will display volts, two decimal places. And there, we can just maybe tidy up our title, voltage versus time. And we've basically got our main chart here. Now, another thing we could do is to get some quick wins here as well, we could work out the maximum voltage similar for the minimum voltage peak to peak is just one minus the other and we could format these as to show that they're volts as well The period of the waveform is the time it takes to complete one cycle, and one way we could actually determine this is just to set ourselves an arbitrary threshold value, and then note the times that the waveform crosses this threshold. The period will then just be the difference between these two times. We'll define the threshold as 2 volts. I'm going to name this cell threshold to make the formula more meaningful. And here I'll use the AND function. If the current voltage or the previous voltage is less than the threshold and the current voltage is greater than the threshold, then we are rising through threshold. It's useful to know the last time we cross the threshold in order to work out the period. So that's what I'm going to do here. Using an if statement to say that if we have crossed the threshold, then the new time is the start time. Otherwise, we're dealing with the previously known value. I'm going to delete this point here so we don't get the column header in the first one. And if we scroll down here, we can see that the first crossing point is at 411288. And the next crossing point is at 841060. So now we are at the point where we could determine the period. So let's do that. And that's basically going to be when we are crossing the threshold in the rising direction. And also that the we've at least crossed at one time before, which we can get by saying that this previous value was greater than zero. In that scenario where we have 
across, then we have a previous value. It's going to be the new value minus the old value, and let's not display anything unless we meet all those conditions. Now what we should see is that when we are crossing through the threshold, we'll have a period measurement down here. Now if we had multiple of these, because many cycles, we probably just want to take the average of them, and we can do that with the table design here, putting in a total row, and then making this use the average function. And so then we can put our um, period here, and just take it from the bottom of the table value there. Right, and we can just maybe bring in some of the number formatting that we used before to make it obvious what we're actually looking at. So the period is in microseconds. And we can show voltage. And we're in the position now where we could calculate the frequency, which is the inverse of the period but we want to convert that back to seconds first so that we'll get an answer in Hertz. So I'm just going to do that there. And um, we should make it obvious what unit we're using there as well. Probably be nice to have the average voltage as well, which we can get quite easily. And one little trap with the threshold as it's set up currently here is, I guess, if the waveform doesn't cross it, for example, if I had to set for 3.7, our frequency in period wouldn't calculate correctly. So if we just sort of set our threshold to be the average, it's pretty much guaranteed that it's going to cross that. So therefore, we're going to get our period and frequency information that we wanted. Um, some of this other stuff here doesn't really add much value to see it, so we could hide that get a bit more screen real estate back. Similarly, we can probably shrink up the size of the text on these things as well. Um, and pull in the size of the columns here to just get a bit more screen real estate again. We'll probably lose a bit here. Um, it would be probably nice that the things we're actually wanting to look at are a bit more in your face and a bit more prominent. So we'll just make them a little bit bigger and bolder. And we could do the same here by just maybe putting a little bit of a border about around the key information that we're trying to, to observe so that our eye gets drawn that way. So I'm just going to put a bit of a border here and probably take away the grid lines as well just so that we don't have them sort of distracting us from what we're looking at. Right, so let's see what this can do. So we've got about one hertz there, which probably corresponds pretty close to what I'm seeing with the flashing of the LED. faster so about four Hertz and we might go even a little bit quicker still with this one to 16 there. If we wanted to see the waveform a little bit more in detail, we could cut out some of the cycles there so we get a bit better view. And there you have it. We've broken out of the DC barrier without having an oscilloscope.